Now, if you look at muscles involved in hip and pelvic girdle motions, it depends largely on the direction of the movement. Are you going forward, backwards, side to side, clockwise, counterclockwise rotation, or combinations of all those? It depends on the direction of the movement and the position of the body in relation to the earth, to the ground, and where the gravitational forces are coming. So if you look at any of those movements, depending on where your flexion extension, you have to look at where gravity's done and which muscles are gonna to work to oppose gravities or either go against gravity or go with gravity. Now the body part that moves most will be the least stabilized. So if we look at hip flexion, now this is gonna be very unstable because it's free to move. Same for if, if we're doing like a good morning. It's against gravity. If you look at it, the hamstrings and glutes, the back is stable, erector spinae, but the movement is at the hips and gravity is moving on our center of mass, forces downward. As we stick our butt back, our hamstrings are lengthening to oppose gravities and slow it down to keep the trunk from moving too fast. So that's what we mean by the first statement. We have to look at the direction of the movement and the position of the body in relation to the earth and the gravitational pull. Now, like I said, standing on, on both feet and contracting the hip flexors, the trunk and pelvis rotate anteriorly. But if you look at that, you know, we want to contract the hip flexors, so we're going to pull this way, all right? But what also is activated? As we, as we activate the hip flexors, it's going to pull the pelvis. Our feet are fixed, so the hip flexors are going to, they're going to shorten. It's going to pull us that way. But what's going to happen? Those are the agonists. On the backside are the antagonistic muscles. So if we lie supine, lay on our back, and contract the hip flexors, the thighs move to, uh, forward in flexion on the stable pelvis. So we have to look at all, where we're at in space and time, what muscles are being worked, where we're going, and what muscles are working to, do, to either oppose gravity or go with it. Now, we look at the hip flexors used in moving the thighs toward the trunk. Now, in the hip, ex the hip extender muscles are used eccentrically when the pelvis and trunk are moving downward slowly on the femur and will be concentrically used when the trunk is raised on the femur rising to a standing position. Basically, it's a squat. Now, in the downward phase of the knee bend exercise, the movement at the hips and the knees is flexion, but it's a passive type of flexion. As we come down, what controls us? The antagonistic muscles, because they're gonna lengthen in an eccentric action to stabilize us and decelerate us. So if we look at that, depending on what type of squat, if you're doing a high bar bodybuilding squat or a front squat, like an Olympic lifter, the knees will go forward, and what's lengthening? The quad muscles. The hamstrings are stabilizing, and the glutes are actually lengthening as well too, to to de decelerate and slow us down. If we're doing a powerlifting squat, the knees are gonna be right over top of the ankles. As we sit back, the hamstrings are gonna lengthen to slow us down. But so are the quads as well too, so are the glutes. And the erector spinae, as our trunk moves forward, are gonna contract to try to stabilize the trunk in that position right in there as we squat down. Now the muscles primarily involved here are the hip and knee extensors and eccentric action. As we just said, as we're trying to slow it down, the quads are going to work to lengthen. The hip extensors are going to lengthen as well to decelerate and hold us into that position. Now if we look at the hip and pelvic girdle muscles, on the anterior side, on the front side, the primary hip flexion muscles are the iliozoas, the pectineus, the rectus femoris, yes, one of the quad muscles, because the rectus femoris crosses both the hip and the knee joint, and the sartorius. In medial, primary hip adduction. Now remember, we're going to pull the leg toward the midline. Adductor brevis, adductor longus, adductor magnus, the gracilis, 
And in posterior, the primary hip extensor muscles are the gluteus maximus, the bicep femoris, the semitendinosus, and semimembranosus, along with the external rotators. Those are the primary hip extensors because they, are, they, may, ex they may externally rotate, but they're going to help in this action as well too. So are all the hamstring muscles, the bicep fem, semitendinosus, and semimembranosus. You have to remember about the hamstring muscles. They cross two joints. Now they may do knee flexion as well, but they also do hip extension. And remember, go back a couple slides. If the feet are fixed, and we're doing extension this way, coming up out of like a good morning exercise, the hamstrings are actually pulling where they're supposed to be inserted at. Those, ham, those origins and insertions will switch, and the insertion becomes the origin, and it's going to pull on the original origin, and as they shorten, they're going to pull us into extension. That, those, are the three, those are the three main uh, movements that the hamstrings do. Flexion, hip extension, trunk extension. Laterally, the primary hip abductors are the gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and the external rotators along with the tensor fascia lata. The pelvic muscles acting on the hip joint are, in the iliac region, the iliozoas muscles, they flex the hip. That's the ilicus, the zoas major, which in essence is the iliozoas. Now the pelvic muscles acting on the hip joint, in the gluteal region, they extend and rotate the hip gluteus maximus, the gluteus medius, the gluteus minimus or minimi, the tensor fascia lata, and all six deep external rotators. They have, they are, these are the muscles that act on the hip joint. They extend and rotate the hip. So you can see here the thigh is divided into three compartments by uh, intermuscular septa. So the anterior department, the medial department, and the posterior compartment. In the anterior compartment, these are the primary, the knee extensors, which are the rectus femoris, the vastus medialis, the vastus intermedius, and the vastus lateralis. We also have the sartorius, and in the posterior compartment, we have the hamstring group. The bicep femoris, the semitendinosus, and the semimembranosus. Next, we have the medial compartment, which is primarily the adductors. So we have the adductor brevis, the adductor longus, the adductor magnus, the pectineus, the gracilis, and that we, that's it for, for that particular compartment. Now, if we look at the nerves, all hip and pelvic girdle muscles are innervated from the lumbar, the lumbar section, and the sacral plexus right in here. Lumbar and sacral plexus. So, but I want you to just get an idea of where the nerves are coming from. Like I said, nothing works without input from the nervous system. So we won't go into that much detail, but I still want you to review all the nerves and where they innervate all the different muscles at because it could be on a test. Now the iliozoas muscle. It does flexion of the hip, flexion of the hip. It does anterior pelvic rotation, pulls it forward. The top of the pelvis will tilt forward. It also does ex external rotation of the hip as well does transverse pelvic rotation contralaterally when ipsilateral femur is stabilized, the opposite side. Or the same, yeah, same side is stabilized. Does flexion of the lumbar spine as well too, the zoas. In other words, if you look at the zoas muscle, when it pulls, it's attached to the hip, so when it contracts, it'll actually flexion of the lumbar spine. Does lateral flexion of the lumbar spine as well too, pulls it to one side or the other and does lateral pelvic rotation contralateral, pulls it to one side. 
zoas. Now the rectus femoris does flexion of the hip as well. Does flexion, extension of the knee, because remember it crosses two joints. And it does anterior pelvic rotation. So if the feet are fixed and it contracts, it'll help tilt the pelvis forward. The sartorius, it does flexion of the hip. Here's the origin, here's the insertion. So when it contracts, it does flexion. Does helps with flexion of the knee. Or flex, yeah, helps, sorry, not extension, flexion, because where it's attached at, behind, uh, on the lateral side, and where it's attached at, it'll help with flexion. Does external rotation of the thigh as it flexes the hip and knee. So when we, when we flex the hip, flex the hip, it'll actually externally rotate the, the leg as well. Does abduction of the hip. So if you look at where it's attached at, when it pulls, it'll pull the inside and pull it to the, toward the out, outside. It also helps with the anterior pelvic rotation. And there's a weak internal rotation of the knee. The pectineus does flexion of the hip, abdu abduction, pulls it in, of the hip, external rotation of the hip, because if you look at that, it's attached behind on the back side, so when it, when it contracts, it'll actually externally rotate the leg. And once again, if the leg is fixed and it contracts, it'll anterior tilt the pelvis. Now the abductor brevis muscle, abduction, abduction of the hip, external rotation as, as it adducts the hip. So as it, as it adducts, it externally rotates. Assist in hip inflection of the hip, and assist in anterior pelvis rotation. Adductor longus muscle, adduction of the hip, assist in flexion of the hip, and assist in anterior pelvic rotation. Adductor magnus, ab adduction of the hip, external rotation as the hip adducts, and does it helps with extension of the hip. The gracilis, adduction of the hip, weak flexion of the knee, internal rotation of the hip, means the hip will internally rotate, assist with flexion of the hip, and is a weak internal rotator of the knee. Semitendinosis, once again, part of the hamstrings, flexion of the knee, extension of the hip, internal rotation of the hip, internal rotation of a flexed knee, and does posterior pelvic rotation, posterior, when the foot is flexed. Remember too, this also helps with all three of the hamstrings. When the foot is flexed, when the foot is stable, and you rotate at the hips and you come back up, when these hamstrings pull, look where it's attached at. When it shortens, it'll pull on the pelvis and helps extend. Semibreminosis, flexion of the knee, extension of the hip, internal rotation of the hip, internal rotation of a flexed knee, and posterior pelvic rotation as well. Once again, it's another part of the hamstrings which causes, when the feet are, feet are fixed, causes extension of the trunk. Bicep femoris, flexion of the knee, extension of the hip, internal rot external rotation of the hip, because it was located on the outside, so it'll cause external rotation. External rotation of a flex knee, and posterior pelvic rotation, and also too, it's part of that hamstring group, so it will cause, with the feet fixed, and one movement at, at the hip, it'll cause trunk extension. Gluteus maximus, extension of the hip, external rotation of the hip, upper fibers assist in abduction, Lower fibers assist in adduction. If you look there, this is what I was talking about in the other ones. You have to look at a whole, at a muscle and see how the muscles are, how the muscle fibers are arranged, and what part, because different parts might do different movements. And it also does pelvic, posterior pelvic rotation. The gluteus medius, ab, 
Abduction of the hip, lateral pelvic rotation to ipsy lateral side. Internal rotation, flexion, and, and anterior pelvic rotation. These are the anterior fibers. And external rotation and extension and posterior pelvic rotation. These are the posterior fibers. The gluteus minimus, abduction of the hip, lateral pelvic rotation to ipsilateral side, internal rotation of femur as femur abducts, flexion of the hip, and anterior pelvic rotation. It does that because if you look at the front, it's attached to the front side, so it'll, when it flexes, it'll do this. Once again, you have to look at muscle fiber architecture, origin insertion, where is it inserted at, and whatever is fixed, and whatever is fixed, if, if the, the end is free to move, it's gonna do something else, but if the feet are fixed and the muscle contracts, what is it pulling on? The origin insertions can differ, can switch. Now, tensor fasciolata, abduction of the hip, flexion of the hip, Tendency to rotate the hip internally as it flexes. Does that. And anterior pelvic rotation. Now the six deep lateral rotator muscles. Piriformis, gemellus superior, gemellus inferior, obturator externus, obturator internus, quadratus femoris. The six external rotators. All they do is externally rotate the hip. The whole leg externally rotates. Now in hip flexion, the agonists are the zoas muscle, the ilicus, and those two together make the iliozoas, the rectus femoris, and the pectineus. That causes hip flexion. And then the pectineus also too in there is the sartorius, and the tensor fasciolata. In hip extension, the agonists are the gluteus maximus, bicep femoris of the long head, semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and once again, you have to look at that, it will, with the feet fixed, it will cause trunk extension. Hip abduction, agonists are gluteus medius, Tensor fasciolata, gluteus maximus, gluteus minimus. For adduction, the adductor brevis, adductor longus, abductor magnus, and also to the gracilis. Internal rotation, hip at the hip. We got the gluteus minimus, the gluteus medius and the tensor fasciolata. Hip external rotation. We have the gluteus maximus and the six deep external rotators. Now, once again, with all the websites, you can go there and look at different uh, views of it from a medical point of view, what types of injuries are with uh, the hip the hip flexors, the hip extensors, all the hip joints and the, and the lower back, you can look at that to see what, what causes it. Uh, interactive muscle anatomies, um, extensive indexes about joints, fractures, muscle injuries and all that. So go through these, look at it, you know, and take a, take a good look at some of these websites to get a, a more of an inside view of what these particular muscles and these joints do. We'll see you next time.